my family flies. We just do. Um, my dad was a, an airline pilot and still flies a, an aerobatic uh, biplane. And uh, my uh, younger brother Chris is an astronaut, and he's just get training for his third flight into space, where he'll be a, take command of the International Space Station. I'm a longtime Air Canada pilot, and I fly the Boeing 777 to China. And uh, my brother Phil is a 6-7 captain flying the Atlantic these days. My wife's a pilot. In fact, we just bought our second airplane, and that's, that's her airplane. And um, my son is a bush pilot, uh, a captain for Wasaya Airlines out of Thunder Bay. So whenever Anybody we... walk in your family? <laughs> <laughs> well, whenever we have a family dinner, uh, well, the hangar doors don't close. Back in the 80s, a group of people who just uh, really wanted to promote and preserve classic antique aircraft got together and um, they decided to meet at least a couple of times a week and restore some old airplanes and keep them flying because more and more and more as time goes by they've been replaced by modern you know all metal airplanes and uh, that's well it's almost uh, 25 years now or more I guess it's more and it, it's uh, been something that's c continued through several generations of volunteers and uh, growing steadily has a has a good solid future. In those days, the Collingwood Classic Aircraft Foundation um, got a Tiger Moth and, uh, and had it flying in 1989. And uh, it's the one that we still fly, an absolutely classic stock 1942 original time warp of an airplane, Tiger Moth. And we fly it in the old way with the old equipment, uh, just as if we were flying in 1942. The Tiger Moth was developed to be a basic trainer for the Royal Air Force. And uh, it was first built in 1931 and replaced the trainers that they had at that time. And then in World War II, Canada decided to make Tiger Moths as well for the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan, which was an enormous contribution to World War II. Canada's, one of Canada's prime contributions. We trained over 250,000 air crew in, in starting, and the basic um, trainer, the airplane that the student first would encounter was a Tiger Moth, a Canadian Tiger Moth built in Downsview and equipped for the winter, but in other ways, very, very similar to the one that we fly here. Uh, you mentioned equipped for the winter. We saw that yours has an open cockpit. Open cockpit, no brakes, and then a tail skid. And that isn't very practical for the Canadian winter, as everybody knows. So the uh, Canadian Tiger Moths are modified a little bit to have brakes and a tail wheel and uh, a canopy and a little bit of heat, maybe, if things are just right. There's a whole mindset that goes along with flying a vintage airplane. It's not just a turnkey operation. You know, you don't just hop in, start the motor and go. So um, there is quite a long uh, training and familiarization process. But once you get familiar with that, the airplane is surprisingly robust. It's made of wood and canvas and it appears quite flimsy, but it's well uh, strutted and braced and uh, it can take a lot of G, usually more than the pilot can and uh, it can take a lot of abuse. The, the Tiger Moth actually as a trainer has a lot going for it. We have some young people come out and often they're family members. We, um, they finally find out often through a school project or something about what their father, grandfather, great-grandfather did during the war and that leads to uh, questions and um, someone in the family will have heard of our operation and they'll say well you know if you want to fly in your granddad's airplane you can and so we'll take up a 12 year old or a 13 year old and he can see exactly what it was like for his grandfather when, when he was 19. If you wanted to learn how to fly one of these machines, what would you have to do? There's nobody doing actual initial training in a Tiger Moth in Canada at the moment. Uh, that's pretty rare anywhere in the world. It's more common <clears throat> to uh, learn in a Cessna or a Piper or, tip, or, or pr an advanced ultralight like they have here on the field at Edenvale, and then make a transition later. So they have to learn uh, uh, the basic aspects of flight in a more modern airplane and then they'll transition to the tailwheel training that we can give them you know uh, in our airplanes and then the Tiger Moth. Uh, the aircraft and the ECAF cover the spectrum from the mid-30s to about 1950 and our, our oldest uh, airplane is under restoration it's a pre-war Stinson trainer a two-seater it isn't uh, flying yet but it's well along the way and then we have the Tiger Moth which was built in 1942 which of course is the iconic World War II Air Force trainer and then we have a couple of the airplanes that were built just after World War II to train people to fly. An Aronka Champ, which is, you know, they made tens of thousands of those uh, all over the world. People have learned to fly in an Aronka Champ. And also the Canadian Fleet Canuck, which was built in Fort Erie for exactly the same purpose. My father learned to fly in a Fleet Canuck. And then we have a, a home-built four-seater called a Peel uh, Diamant. And another little home-built single-seater called a Baby Ace. 
And then recently we were um, donated uh, an amphibian, a Republic CB, which is a flying boat and looks like a flying boat, great big heavy thing. So uh, we have lots of airplanes right now. The gathering of the classics has really grown over the last few years, partly because of the volunteers that we have, you know, the current generation of volunteers that host and put the thing on, and also because of the tremendous facilities here at the Edenvale Aerodrome. Having uh, runways, new runways that point into the wind, lots of room for parking, uh, that really helps. And also this is a part of the, of the country where the ATC structure is uh, pretty much non-existent, so people can do their own thing. They can uh, fly in here, and as long as they join the arrival stream so there aren't any conflicts, and there's a whole briefing about that, then they can slip in here for an air show amongst hundreds of airplanes without too much fuss and bother. So it's a lot of fun to join an event where there are hundreds of airplanes of, of the kind that you admire and like and participate in. And of course, uh, it's also grown in that we have uh, over 200 classic cars show up from Rolls Royces to Corvettes and Thunderbirds and all the classic street cars. And uh, this year we'll have a music festival as well for, for those who aren't particularly focused on airplanes or cars. So the whole thing has just grown and grown and grown with public participation and pilots participation because it's a, such a great facility. It's called the Gathering of the Classics because we hope to bring in aircraft uh, from the 1940 to 1960 period. Classic, old-fashioned, tail wheel, often fabric covered. Some of them have round engines, some of them are biplanes. Some of the airplanes that are disappearing, you know, there aren't that many on the civil register anymore, and we try and bring them all together in one place. It's a great day because uh, it's just such a wonderful sight to see and hear and smell all these old airplanes. It's also kind of useful for the pilots to get together and talk about this engine and that oil system and this electrical system and how do you do this and how do you fix that. It's a, it's a useful day for everyone. We had the B-25 bomber here, which was uh, a very famous World War II bomber. It's the one that launched off an aircraft carrier, even though it was an Army airplane, and bombed Tokyo in 1942. And uh, it's operated by Canadian Warplane Heritage. But this year, we had the Supermarine Spitfire and the Hawker Hurricane coming from Vintage Wings of Canada in Ottawa, Gatineau. And those are the real thing. They're not home built or replicas or anything like that. The uh, Spitfire was built in 1945 and became the personal airplane of a of an air marshal of the Royal Air Force, and the Hurricane uh, saw combat in Italy and the Middle East with number six squadron, Royal Air Force. And they've been restored, and uh, we'll have the two of them side by side. And they are iconic because those are the two airplanes that uh, pretty much saved Britain in the uh, summer of 1940 in the Battle of Britain, because the Germans were trying to invade, and they needed air supremacy in order to get their boats across the English Channel and they couldn't get air supremacy because the Spitfire and the Hurricane were able to defend the skies over Britain. They're not replicas, they're not rebuilds, they're, they're, they're nothing like that. They're the real thing. The Spitfire came off the assembly line at the Supermarine Works in 1945 and was flown by an air marshal of the Royal Air Force at the time. And the Hawker Hurricane is a Mark IV. It's the only flying Mark IV in the world. And it's a combat veteran, served with number six squadron of the Royal Air Force in Eastern Europe. And, uh, and then the, the Middle East. And they've been very, very carefully restored. Uh, but m much of the structure is original, particularly in our Spitfire. And um, there's no place else that you can see a Spitfire and a Hurricane flying side by side in Canada. Uh, see, the, these are the only two. If anyone wants to go for a ride in any of these uh, aircraft, uh, they can do it on site on that day. You don't have to book ahead. But it's, there will be a lineup. So the sooner that you uh, get yourself uh, in that lineup and your name down on a piece of paper, the better.